Hello, hello. Am I live? I just go? Yeah. I'm here? Wow, hey guys! Holy smokes, I'm here! <laughs> welcome, welcome to my class. Beautiful. Can you see me? I think so. Can they hear yes. me? Yes, me. Awesome. Same we'll do a sense. little sound check. Can you guys hear me? Let me know where you're tuning in from. My name is Gina Bianca. I'm the global salon business expert for Joyco. Thank you, Joyco. Thank you behind the chair for being or for letting me be here. I'm so grateful to share with you my favorite thing in the world, and that's education, hair and business. You guys, I'm here for it. I'm so excited to spend the next 45 minutes with you. But first, let me know if you could hear me. Let me know if you can see me. We're going to do a little sound check, little... Uh, no, we're good? Oh, okay. Dope. We're amazing. So today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be sharing with you my 30 minute power placement. So power placement basically means we're going to do high impact and not a lot of time, not a lot of work. So what I'm going to do is focus on showing you a couple of different ways to foil. I'm going to show you a few. I'm going to show you a really cool pattern to do up the top that you can totally customize for your own. And I'm going to share with you my favorite thing in the entire world, which is salon business. You guys, that is my passion. That is what I'm here for. Uh, that is my expertise. I've been a salon salon owner for five years, a hairstylist for 10 years, a coach, a mentor, and I've trained people from out of school, from stylists with 20, 30 years of experience. Business is my wheelhouse. That's what I'm here for. So I would love to have you guys share with me all of your business questions that you have. Those are the questions that I'm going to be answering today. Any questions about your formulation, ask in the comments, anything. We have our team at Joyco here to tell you everything you need to know. I want to hear your business questions. I have my two assistants here. They're going to be telling me everything you need, any, any questions that you have, I wanna hear them. All right, you guys, so now that you guys have a little bit of time to come on, I wanna share with you one more thing before we get started. That's the Joyco sweepstakes. Joyco has been helping hairstylists since the start of COVID-19 to help them get their bills paid. So go to joyco.com and enter their sweepstakes. They're giving hairstylists $1,000 a month. You can enter to win. There's no purchase necessary. All of the information is there. And I think we're about ready to get started. All right. So I have my beautiful dolly. She's absolutely stunning. Um, I went in and I prepped her with the Joyco Defy Damage first, the Pro Series 1. And what that's going to do is going to protect her hair from any um, excess damage, wear and tear. It's also going to give her five times stronger, or five times stronger hair. It's going to give her easier lift. And all you're going to have to do to use the Pro Series 1 is you're going to have to shake the can vigorously. And then you're going to spray it out. Now I've already prepped the whole head. But what I'm gonna do is give you a little tip. I'm gonna add a little bit more around that fragile hairline and just make sure we're getting a little bit of extra protection. So I'm gonna shake the can vigorously, spray it down. And this is just gonna help with lift and it's gonna prevent any damage to the hair. Awesome. I'm also working with the Blonde Life 30 volume. We mixed it one to two, as you guys can see, or one to one and a half, excuse me. Um, and it's just a little, it's creamy, but it will still blend. Blonde Life is cool because you could go from one to one or one to two, and you kind of just mix it to your consistency that you like. And I really, depending on the hair type, kind of customize it as I go, but it's usually one to a little bit more than one or one to two one to one and a half. I love that for foliage and it works really well for me. But then again, you guys, be creative and use the tools the way you love. Awesome. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys, this is my dolly. She's beautiful. We prepped her, she's sectioned. I've got a mohawk section up at the top here. This mohawk section I'm gonna put wherever her part is. So if her part is somewhere inside here, you're good. That way when the hair falls, it will look balanced on both sides. If they have a uh, side part or if they want a lot of coverage, sometimes you could do two mohawks too. So I'm gonna do one mohawk and I'm gonna go from the back of the mohawk to behind the ears and create two side sections. These sections I'm not going to even touch, I'm just leaving them out. I have her money piece. And then I have a triangle section here. So the only things I'm gonna be foiling are this triangle section, this mohawk, and her money piece. The rest of the hair is gonna get left out and it's gonna give us beautiful depth to pop against, which is really in right now. So uh, the more hair you leave out, honestly, the better in 2020. I think it's way better. So I'm gonna start in the back. I'm 
I'm gonna start in the back and I'm gonna take my first section. This triangle section is here for a reason. This triangle section, this is where the head shape changes. And here I like to take a triangle because I really like to like just keep that in mind that this area, maybe I could feather, take bigger sections, or just think a little bit differently here because this is where the head shape changes. And this is where I wanna make sure I like just think a little bit differently. So I always do a triangle section here and I could really foil it a million different ways. But my favorite way is to preserve depth. So for power foil placement, something really fast, something that uh, you, know, you can do behind the chair when you're short on time, this stitch here is really, really good. So I have pretty much a crooked section. Let me clean that up for you. Perfect. I've got a good size section here. Now the size of your initial section is gonna determine how much depth is left behind. The size of your initial section is gonna determine how much depth is left behind. So I'm gonna take a nice juicy section here. Yes, I said juicy, I hate when people say that, but I'm saying it. I'm saying uh, this is a big section here. The triangle point is down here, so there's a lot of depth, okay? A lot of depth left behind. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and go pick up, and then I'm gonna go skim, 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 pick up. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna give me a balayage and baby light look in one stitch. And it's also gonna give me a V shape, if you will. So what I'm gonna do is pinch, anchor. I'm gonna glue where I want saturation to begin. And that can be anywhere. You can glue here, 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 you can glue here. You can glue anywhere you want, you guys. It depends on what you want, what the guest wants, what they have, what the end result, uh, what you want. You know, you gotta really customize color technique, but what you should know is you glue where you want saturation to begin, and then you brush back up, and that will give you a nice foliage look. Now I'm gonna go in. As you can see before, you guys, when I was gluing feather and back brushing up, now I left my tension as soon as I let it go, I need new tension. So where is this tension gonna come from, okay? I need to figure it out. Sometimes when we do foliage, we can't control the foil or it takes forever or it's not blended, whatever. You guys, use your hand back here. We're gonna flip that in. Make sure there's enough product in the middle. Once you get enough product in the middle there, your flip will stick to it. My plate in the back, my hand, I'm pushing up while I'm brushing down, as you guys can see. So my foil is not slipping, my glue, my tension, and my plate, that's gonna keep everything in place, you guys. So once it's done, I'm gonna double fold. Double fold, double fold. And I'm a little bit on a sideways angle, you guys. So just be, be generous with me, be kind, you know. We have to be kind these days. It's the most important thing in life. So I'm gonna go through, take my section, pinch, separate. Nice clean sections, you guys. If you have a challenge with your timing, clean up your sectioning. Can always be cleaner. Even my sections can be cleaner, okay? See, look, they're a mess. Focus on clean sections. Pinch, separate. Beautiful. So now I'm gonna show you a different stitch, okay? And this one, let's go and we'll take all of it. Now remember, the bigger your initial section determines the amount of depth that's left behind, okay? So we're gonna go in, take a nice big section here, and I'm just gonna show you a different stitch now. So I'm gonna go in and pick up, skim, 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 pick up, skim, 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 pick up. Now this is gonna give us a more W look. So this is just more dimension, more balayage look, right? And it's just a different kind of stitch. So this looks really cool back here, it looks really cool on a diagonal here. It looks cool on a diagonal here. It looks good horizontal all the way up the head. It also looks good on a diagonal here. Looks good horizontal here. It actually looks good pretty much anywhere. <laughs> you really just wanna be careful. Like, all right, you guys. All right, let me show you this and I'll tell you. You just wanna be careful that you're, where you're placing the color. So for example, if I take a section here, I don't wanna take the exact same section right on top of it because then it's gonna like, the lines will stack on top of each other and they won't be blended. So maybe I do a V and then a baby light and then a W, or maybe I do skim, 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 pick up, skim, 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 right? And you can bricklay and stagger these foils however you want, 
And it's a really cool way to do hair. It keeps you smart, I think. When you play with your patterns and you play with your stitches and you do stuff like that, it keeps you smart, keeps you, you know, it's like doing crossword puzzles, right? So I like it and it gives a really cool result. Looks beautiful, balayage and baby light. So it's really balayaging your hair while lightening the background, right? What am I doing? Balayage, that's gonna give her pop and peasy look or, you know, you can place that color in. But the baby light's job is to lighten the background color. So I'm really adding pop and lightening the background. So when you think, why am I doing this? Why am I placing the foil this way? Why am I weaving this way? Gotta have the answers, right? So I'm gonna take my next section, pinch, separate, pinch, twist, secure. I'm gonna go in and for this one, I'm gonna go in and do another V. So I'm gonna go in and go pick up, skim, 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 pick up, pinch, separate, pinch. I'm gonna go in, anchor. And so many people, this is like my number one question, I swear, about 21. They say, hey, when you go like this, how come you don't go like this? And my answer is simply, I just don't do it like that. That's not how I do it. <laughs> it's not bad at all. If you're doing something, I want to tell you guys this. If you're doing something and it's working really good for you, you don't have to do everything just like me. You don't have to hold the oil over the comb just like me. Don't sleep on all the skills you built till now. You have amazing skills and we can learn new things all the time, right? So to answer that question, maybe it looks cool the way I'm flipping. You're like, oh, I want to flip it that way. If you're already flipping it the other way, don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it because there's really no difference. So I'm gonna anchor, glue where I want saturation to begin. Nice straight line, you guys like that line? Ooh, ah. We're gonna go in and we're gonna smudge it out. And I'm really, I'm using a frame art, uh, power painter, good tension. Look how strong my tension is. The reason my blend is good is because of my tension. Product uh, consistency and brush. Those three things you can't lose. But if you're having an issue, try a couple of those things. Try to adjust your tension, try to adjust the consistency. You know, uh, if, if you're experiencing a challenge, you guys, really just like slow it down and look. Uh, my fiance inspires me so much. He works on robots. And one of the things that he does is he uses, I got hair in my mouth. He uses slow-mo on his phone to slow down the robot to tell, to tell him like what's wrong. Maybe if you're experiencing a challenge, slow it down, maybe have someone film it for you and look at what you're doing too and then that can help. So when thinking about your blend, maybe take a video of yourself, look, be like, is my product mix right? Hmm, is my tension okay? Oh, it could be better. Or what kind of brush am I using? So those three things can help you with your blend, okay? So try it out. I'm gonna go in. Anytime I'm blending, I'm double folding as to not disrupt my blend. You can always lay another foil on top. Beautiful. Now up here, honestly, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pinch separate, anchor, boom, beautiful, gorgeous. We're gonna glue where we want saturation to begin. And you guys, when I'm doing foils, if I'm nervous about bleeding, if I'm nervous about it getting anywhere, I'm just gonna feather. So feathering is great, but you could get warmth. So if you don't want to get warm, don't feather. Because literally, sometimes when you feather, it's a saturation thing if you have warmth or a band. So be careful. If your guest has really, really dark hair, something like that, feathering might not be the best. You might have to tease, fully saturate, then melt. Other different strategies to do. But if you're feathering and experiencing warmth, it's saturation. Okay? So think about that. If you're having a challenge, if you're like, why is it always warm? I'm even using foils. You're like, I'm using foils and it's still warm. What's wrong with me? You guys, it's not you. It's a saturation thing. Beautiful. I love it. All right. So right now, I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do this and this. So I'm gonna go right into the top segment because I want you to see everything. And basically this top section here this is the same as the sides, okay? So I'm gonna go right into the top, and then pretty much if you were to do this, if I don't get to these sides, pretty much you're just gonna do the same exact thing as I do in the money piece, okay? And if we get here, it's a bonus, or we can answer your questions. 
Okay, thank you again, Behind the Chair, Joyco. I love you guys so much. If you guys didn't know, I was introduced to Joyco through BTC and literally to be here sharing with all of you guys, I feel like it's come full circle. I love you guys so much and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for believing in my education and, and me as an artist. I appreciate you so much. Two questions. Oh yes, we have questions. Thanks, Alexandra. Michelle says, I'm trying to find a quick technique to give my thick five inch grown out level six client a rooted, pretty solid level nine result. Any ideas? In the past, I've done weaving and black hole and Okay, so if you have a guest who needs a ton, okay, this is a great question because this is going to lead us into some difficult conversations, which is one of my specialties. Um, I, if you have one difficult conversation a day, you guys, you are growing because growth happens through pain, uncertainty, and discomfort. Okay, uh, you need to have these difficult conversations. So, for example, if you have a guest who's coming in and you're looking for quick technique, one of the things that you might have to do is compromise. You might have to come to a compromise when it comes to getting your services done and when it comes to creating the results on somebody who needs more time, you have to set boundaries. Okay. I can give you a, I can give you a pattern up through here. That's great that you could use on a bunch of different guests for somebody with super dark hair with an all over level nine result at the end. This isn't the technique for that. However, um, when it comes to needing to do quick techniques on somebody, if they're on a budget, if you're on a budget, a time budget, all of those things, you need to set boundaries and maybe ask them like, what do you love about this photo? What can you not live without? Why are you really here today? Right. And try to make sure that you deliver that like the, like what those things that they really, really want. Sometimes you don't always have to deliver the entire thing. And we put a lot of stress on ourselves. So maybe as far as being a stylist comes, setting boundaries, having difficult conversations and just having a solution outside of either doing the whole thing for free or cheap or not doing it at all. You have to be resourceful. You have to have like a million tricks up your sleeve. So when I was first starting out in the industry, I started um, in 2009, uh, everybody was broke. <laughs> Nobody had a lot of money back then. Um, and I built my whole business on Groupon, Living Social, those kinds of websites where everybody was discounting and discounting. And that's how I learned to be resourceful. How can I get this look for this amount of money, right? What questions are you asking? So make sure you guys understand too. Sometimes when you have those guests that come in who are like, you know, annoying or who maybe like really want this for zero dollars and zero cents and zero time, or maybe they don't understand what it takes to get to that goal. You know, if you have those guests, maybe they're there to teach you how to be resourceful. So you don't have to say no. You don't have to say yes and then do it for free. Be resourceful, be confident, give them, give them something. You know, sometimes guests would come in and they want like this crazy thing and they have a hundred dollars. And as a stylist, I don't care how, I, how big I am on Instagram, as a human being, I'm not going to tell somebody no. Like, I'm not going to say, get out, you can't afford me. I would never do that. My job is to make that person on a budget feel like they're a rock star because they can't afford me because I made it work for them. That's the mindset you have to have. So when it comes to quick services, sometimes there's not a quick service to get a result. There's not a quick service to get a result, but there's a technique you can use and learn and practice and make part of your day-to-day -day toolkit that makes you a resourceful and better stylist. This technique isn't gonna solve every problem with every guest, but this technique can give you that tool that you can use on every guest in some way, right? So what's our other question? And not hair related, if possible. Okay, great. Um, I love to create a segment on boundaries and having those conversations so long with helping with price services when you are a yeah, absolutely. So if you've heard the Gina Bianca podcast, I have a bunch of episodes on this, a lot of episodes on this. So please listen to that. Um, when it comes to boundaries and all of those things, it's an important part of our business because we do hair, right? But we're also human beings. A lot of hairstyles don't understand like, hey, I have to manage a whole business. I have to make all of these people happy. I have to figure out a way to make them come back. I have to figure out a way to cross sell. I need more service and I need more retail streams if one gets shut off, right? What are we doing as, as stylists to elevate ourselves, right? 
what are we doing to like protect ourselves and our family and our lives like to grow and get better right so boundary is one that's like one lesson in being a hairstylist it's not enough to just do hair anymore right you'll go crazy <laughs> You'll go crazy. You need to learn how to take care of yourself, how to say no. You need to know what clients are worth it, what clients aren't. But I'll tell you what, this money piece is dope. So we have we, we, and then our next is gonna be a slice right behind it. Nothing in between, cool? And what that's gonna do, it's gonna give her a beautiful money piece. So it's gonna weave, weave, slice. And then I'm gonna leave a nice chunk here so that it lays against that darkness. So this is her shadow. I don't have to put in a shadow root. I'm leaving a shadow root, if that makes sense. So quick service, you don't have to go in and do many steps. If you think about this being the shadow, this is your shadow. If, there's a if there were three highlights on this, it would be super bright, right? Because this is so dark. So think about putting the light next to the dark and that's gonna give you your money piece in your pot. Cool? So this is my next section. I'm gonna go in, grab it. Pinch. How much time do we have? 13 minutes. All right, let's take one more question if you guys have it. Make it a good one. If you've got it, we're going to do one more question towards the end. And I'm going to uh, answer that closer to the end. And I'm going to go right back into color placement here with you all. So let's see. I went in, I did weave, weave with a slice right behind it. And again, if, you have a, if you're having a challenge when foiling, if it takes forever, if this is you flipping the foil and it's like impossible, or if you're like um, accordioning it into the hair, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like the extra steps, this is my tip and trick. Like one person on this live feed is gonna like hug me for it. Cause I didn't learn this for a long time, but it took me so long to do foils because I was taught to skimp on product. Use the product, you guys. Use a lot of it. And when you have enough product here, your flip will have something to stick to, right? So you don't have to fight with it. Use the product. <laughs> I'm really having fun. Are you guys liking this? Are they liking it, Alexandra? Oh my God, I love you guys. I can't read any of the comments, can't see anything. Just want you guys um, to get as much value as you can from this. Awesome. So my next section, pinch. Get that out of the way. Let's clean that up. This is a little sloppy, I apologize. Oh dear. <laughs> Breathes nervously. <laughs> Imagine this is subtitled later. <laughs> Haley, if you're watching, subtitle me. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you guys this cool pattern, but I'm going to give you a really quick overview of it. So this mohawk, when we foil, if we foil from the front, we assume it's horizontal because that's what we see. This section, this mohawk is a vertical section. Anything you place here is going to fall vertically if you're going this way. So I don't want this look to be harsh. I don't want it to be stripey, streaky, any of that. I want it to have like blended dimension, maybe a little bit of pop, but I want it to be pretty natural. So I'm gonna choose to go on a diagonal and then do some horizontals, but I'm gonna do my pick up, skim, 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 pick up. So I'm gonna be doing some dimension, lightening the background and giving her like a really nice placement that's gonna grow out really easy, okay? And it's super easy, there's gonna be like five, six sections, something like that. All right, Question? let's do the last, let me get through this here and we'll do those last uh, questions at the end. So my first section is gonna be a diagonal here. As you can see, little diagonal. My next section is gonna be a diagonal here. So my first section, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven weaves are very natural. We could do nine, 12 weaves. Like the higher the weave, the more natural. So I'm gonna go in. Glue where I want saturation to begin, which is almost the skin, but not really. Feather it up. Plate. Beautiful.
double fold anytime I feather. Beautiful. I'll flip it off to the other side. So my first two diagonal sections are going to be weaves. And if you're curious to see how that's going to fall, all you have to do is drop it. So it's just going to brighten up the front veil behind that money piece. So it's not going to be like weave, weave, slice, boom. It's going to be weave, weave, slice, a little bit of dimension, and then it's going to be softly going back. Okay. So these little diagonals, they serve a purpose. It's soft, like anything that falls on a diagonal is going to be a softer placement. Glue where you want saturation to begin, which is almost a skin, but not quite. Go in, feather that up. Plate. Beautiful, beautiful, awesome. Now I'm gonna show you the next part of the pattern. And we're gonna go horizontal. Now you can go horizontal here if you want to. You can go here. You can meet the lines. The big difference is how much depth do you wanna leave behind, right? You can customize this completely. How much depth do you wanna leave behind? So if I wanna just go in and leave a good amount of depth, I'm gonna go from here to here and all of this is gonna get left out. Remember my first triangle section? It's the same thing. So I'm gonna go in and balayage on top of this darkness and it's gonna give her some pop. Now I'm gonna go pick up, skim, 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 pick up. And it's gonna be baby light, baby light, baby light, baby light, pop. Baby light, baby light, baby light, baby light, pop. Cool. I love it. All right, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go pick up, skin, 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 pick up. Pinch, separate, pinch. Beautiful. We're going to anchor. Now you can make these go, you can glue way down here if you want to. You can glue, I, I mean, I've just always been gluing like for this technique pretty much like, you know, through the top. But you can glue way down here if you want to. You don't have to glue all the way up. You can make this like totally like pop in at the ends and that's it. You can put this foil really anywhere. Just drop it first. Drop it and imagine what you're doing before you do it and watch your work transform. Love it. All right, my next section is gonna be another diagonal and I'm gonna just follow this pattern all the way. And you know what? I'm going in and just doing two. So I'm gonna go in and go right to the back. So I'm gonna go in here, bring her down. There we go. <laughs> I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pinch. Anchor. Glue where you want saturation to begin. Beautiful. All right, what's that last question, Alexandra? Okay, so take it or leave it, you guys. I don't think a good price increase time is right now. I think a good price increase time is October 1st. That's uh, what I've been teaching for about 10 years now. Like I would not raise prices anytime outside of October 1st, unless I was fully booked hundred to 200% booked, like double and triple booked. Um, if you need to do an emergency price increase here, the, here are the things you have to be grossly undercharging for your area. You have to have your reputation, experience, demand, education, cost per hour, all of that lined up. You have to be providing excellent guest care because anytime you do a price increase, no matter how good you are, you're going to lose people. The only thing is you have to think of how booked am I? How busy am I? You know, am I 50% booked? So if I lose 20, 30%, am I going to be hurting, right? So I don't think now is a good time. Um, that's my honest advice. So I don't want to give you advice to say, hey, go do this, because I don't think it's a good time.
Um, I think you should DM me. We should talk more about it. But when it comes to raising your prices, if you're introducing your pricing, new pricing, the way that it has to happen, it has to be over time and it has to be, and you're not going to like this, it has to be in person, one-on-one, -on -one, one guest at a time. You have to be confident enough to say, hey, in order for you to enjoy the experience, in order for you to have the experience you've come to enjoy, my prices are on October 1st are going to be this. I have them printed out for you. It's all here for you. Um, and I would love to see you there. Maybe have a couple people recommended on the back. You got to be confident. Okay. If you raise your prices and you're like, oh, 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 <laughs> you can't do that. You cannot do this. You have to be ready. Okay. You have to be confident. And that takes a lot of inner work. That takes boundaries. Whoever said it earlier knew the answer at the end. Takes boundaries. You've got to learn those things. If you raise your prices and you're feeling super scared about it, like not prepared, really scared, afraid to tell your client there's something out of line. Okay. When you're walking your talk all the time, it's okay to raise your prices. Okay. So remember reputation, experience, demand, education, cost, power, all those things. You can get them in my ebook too, or on the podcast or in my class or anywhere. But you guys, there's so many things that go into pricing when it comes to introducing your prices to your current guests, you have to be confident. That's my answer to you. You have to be confident. And a lot of work goes into that. Don't feel pressured to raise your prices right now. Don't feel pressured to raise them right now. The world, there's a lot of changes. So don't feel the pressure. Don't be like, oh my God, I have to raise my prices before I go back. Breathe, be, and spend time with your guests. Okay. Spend time, love them, care about them. That's what it's all about. That's why we got behind the chair in the first place. If you're ever wondering, think of why you got behind this chair in the first place. And that will always lead you back to where you're supposed to be going. Okay. I'm going to go to my last section here. And I love you guys so much. I love every hairstylist. Literally my mission is to help hairstylists and just leave this industry better than it was when I came in. Uh, my mentor, Tabitha Coffey, that's what she said. She said her mission is to leave the, the, the industry better and I wanna follow in her footsteps and leave it better. And you know, that's one hairstyle at a time. That's one conversation at a time. That's one crisis at a time, one class at a time. And I really thank you all for tuning in with me. And um, 10 minutes? How many minutes, baby? Oh, okay. Amazing. So we have plenty of time. All right. Let's answer more questions. Okay. How did you do this level of a group class rating? Okay. This is a great question. So let me just be clear on time. What time is it right now? 524. 524. We have 10 minutes. Dope. Okay. Perfect. Wow. How did I get through this this fast? Because you're, you're amazing. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now that I can catch my breath. Okay, question was, how do I do this on a gray coverage guest? Two answers. Depends on the guest. If the guest goal is to have color highlights coming up to her skin, I would recommend applying the foils coloring in between, or I hate doing that. I really do, do not like doing that. It's a pain, only because I'm so, OCD about my foils. If you follow me, if you know me, you know like how clean and how close to the skin I like the foils. So introducing a color in there when the expectation is to the skin, not really realistic for me at my quality. Okay. If you can do that and you're dope at it, don't, I mean, you rule, right? For me, it's too much. So I will either do their root, wash it, dry it, foil it, or do the foils, color in between, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I would do one or the other. I wouldn't do it at the same, like, I wouldn't do it at the same time, do the root and then highlight over the root color. So if you're blending it into the root color where they're like kissing, it's okay. These colors are not meant to go further than that, if you know what I mean. Okay, don't overlap them. Don't like smash them into each other. It's just not gonna come out right. Because what's gonna happen? You put gray coverage on here, highlight over it. 
the lightener is going to fight the gray. It, they're going to be punching each other and they're neither of them are going to do anything. It's just going to be like, Bleh. right? Cool. Um, let's do a couple more questions and I'm going to finish my technique with that one last section. I love you guys so much. Someone said I was, I wish I had someone like you to tell me what you just said. You do have me all the time. I'm here. I don't have to be there with you in the flesh. For you to know I'm thinking of you and I care about you. I care about every hairstylist. Okay, hold on. I'm out of color. I need more than this. Okay. I like to use the product, okay? I was like brainwashed in my life to like not use product. And I'm just like, no, no more. I will use, I will saturate. I must saturate. <laughs> All right, hold on. What other questions do you guys have? Tell me, give me another business question before I go. Give me another business question or... Oh, October is the best time to raise your prices, literally, because everybody's broke. Like, everybody's getting ready for Christmas. Like, everybody's getting ready for, like, all of the things. And it's too busy. Like, all the good stylists are booked up. It's, you can't move, right? Those are the times you raise your prices and you say, Sally, I've had a great year and my prices are going up. Uh, and in order for you to have the experience you've come to enjoy, on October 1st, my prices are now this. And if you've been doing your job... <laughs> As a hairstylist, killing it, spending time with your guests, taking care of them, meeting, exceeding their needs, not passing them off to people, spending good time with them, delivering the results, checking in with them, recommending products, telling them when to come back. If you're doing all of those things, you guys, when you say this, the people who don't like it, they're just going to go away. And then those are the people who you probably have a panic attack in the shower in the morning. You're like, no, I'm not going to work. Cause Sally's in my column and she makes me feel like I shouldn't even be a hairdresser. Right? Like we don't need that in our lives. So you know what you guys, if you're living, if you're really performing, you won't have an issue. That's the problem. Hairstylists and everyone wants an easy answer. How do I make more money? And the answer is wearing overalls and work boots. The answer is putting in 500 foils a week. <laughs> Right? The answer is the guest callback. The answer is when your guest kind of looks a little off, you sense it because you're not busy by other shit. Right, you guys? Like that is how you retain customers. That's how you grow your business, right? We can foil, we can foil, but what, what does it really take to keep your clients, right? October is a great time because people are broke, um, everybody's busy, and it's a stressful time to change. And honestly, you won't have an issue if you're performing. Does that make sense, you guys? Let me know if, if it makes sense, if you're feeling it. They're loving it. I love you guys so much. Thank you to all my followers who show up on all of my lives and shows and classes to support me. I love you guys. I love you guys so much. In the comments, the messages that you guys send me, I'm gonna start crying because like it's been tough times and you guys, like the kind messages and like everything, I appreciate you and I know a lot of you are watching and I know you always watch for me and I love you a lot. And I love you Joyco, I love you BTC so much for giving me these opportunities. Seriously, I'm so grateful. Awesome. Let me go in here, take my next section and we're gonna go pick up, scheme, 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 scheme. Pick up, pinch, separate, pinch. Yeah. yeah, let's go. You mentioned that you started out with a new problem. Did you still get that advice to the title for right now? I didn't have a choice. I did not have a choice, okay? All right. This, let me get this for one. And then I'm going to yell at you guys. What you, so this is what you follow me for, okay? Brace for impact. Okay. Beautiful. All right. My technique is done. Right, blonde my 30 volume. I'm toning her with NAG, natural ash gold. Natural ash gold. One of my favorite formulations for an even balanced 
tone, nag. When you don't know what to do, do nag, okay? N-A-G, natural ash gold. Best way to balance a formula, I've been using it forever because I'm not formula brainiac smart, okay? I'm color placement smart and I'm smart in other areas, but to me, my brain doesn't look like a color wheel, okay? Formulation for me, I need to keep it simple and it needs to make sense. So I use nag and many variations of that, okay? Balance, 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 balance formula. So on her, I'm using 10N, 10NG, 9NA, natural ash gold. And it's gonna be, give me a beautiful bright blonde. If your guess is like brassy or warmer, use less of the gold, more of the NA. If it's opposite, it's like mucky, or if you're worried about it being too ashy or too cool, or maybe their canvas is really porous and you're worried about it turning drab, use a little bit more of the gold. If you really just want it balanced, even cool, and you wanna like let the hair do its thing too, you could always use natural. Like the ends are beautiful for Joyco Luma Shine. So don't be afraid to play with them. And if you don't know what to do, do nag. When you're in a color correction situation, I want you to think to yourself, you're gonna be like, what do I do, what do I do? Gina said, do nag, I promise you. It has saved my ass so many times. That's what I'm gonna tone her with. Now, my, form, my placement is done. She's beautiful. All right, go process, Sally. <laughs> All right, when I started out in my career, I had a great experience in my first salon, mainly because I got my ass kicked. My mentor was really hard on me. So many times she sent me home and she was just like, get out, you're not in any shape to touch my guest because you have to be excellent. You can't just like, you can't just like do hair and you know, half ass it. You know what I mean? Like she was excellent and she kept me like very disciplined. Building my clientele on Groupon, I didn't have a choice because that's how my salon was and the way that they did it, it was very successful for me. Look at me now, like look at me now. And it's not because I did hair on Groupon and was like, oh, when well, I have to do hair on Groupon. It's because I literally had to make on this budget, this hair. And then I had to make this guest that my salon owner paid for. Like we pay Groupon, right? And I'm not advertising Groupon, but we pay these things. So my salon owner paid for that guest to come see me. So it's about the opportunity that you're given. Every day you stand up, you have legs. If you don't, I'm sorry, and I love you. There are people who don't. Every day you stand up, you have legs, be grateful for that. Every client that walks in your chair, be grateful for that. There's people who wish they were walking through. There's people who would kill to have a client walk through their chair at any price. So for me, when I was starting, it was not complaining and it was building a business. And look at me now. So if you have to go on Groupon, if you have to go through and do things, or if you outside of X, Y, and Z, you're learning to be resourceful. And that is something that money can't really buy, right? You can't teach that except for experience.